You are watching Big Monday presented by Delta, part of our Play for K initiative. We join you from Norman, Oklahoma, where number four Baylor is in town to take on the number 23 Sooners. Second time these two teams have met. They met back on January 3rd in Waco. Baylor won that by 10 points. Baylor just one blemish on its record. Losing at Oklahoma State the end of December in their conference opener, but two of their best players, Alexis Prince and Nia Johnson, did not play. Baylor beat Oklahoma State by 25, but next time they play, Nia Johnson, Carolyn Peck, leads the country in assists. And it's because she has terrific court vision. She sees a play ahead. She also has terrific patience. She waits till the defense shifts, and then she finds her shooters when they're open. And talk about timing, she's dropping dimes right on time, and her teammates pick it up. Right place, right time. Nia Johnson just named the Big 12 Player of the Week for her work against Oklahoma State and Iowa State. The last time these two played, these two teams played, Nia played all 40 minutes, was just three rebounds short of a triple-double. She has flirted with some triple-doubles this year, but has not gotten there. Only one player in the history of Baylor women's basketball has had a triple-double, and that would be... Brittany Griner and did it five times with uh, the blocks, rebounds, and scoring. Sherry Cole, the head coach for Oklahoma. No one has won more games in the history of this league. Last took her team to the Final Four in 2010. And she is taking on Kim Mulkey and the Lady Bears of Baylor. Baylor winning the national championship in 2012. And since then, they have not gotten back, losing in the last two years in the Elite Eight, both times to Notre Dame. But I think that she has the team this year to get to Indianapolis. She's got the big three. She's got a strong point guard. She's got a scoring forward in Nina Davis. And then she's got a lot of young post players, but they're giving her good production in the paint. Yeah, a couple of freshmen, Beatrice Mom Premier and Kalani Brown, who comes off the bench, has really given them a boost. Maddie Manning getting ready to jump against Montpierre and Baylor wearing the home whites, even though they're on the road because Oklahoma is in pink. Johnson with the ball in her hand, so good. Nina Davis says sometimes she's too unselfish. And this, we have not even mentioned what Alexis Jones, the transfer from Duke, has meant to this team. Well, that's what I was going to say. The other piece of the puzzle is the scoring offensive threat of Alexis Jones that transferred in out of Duke. Jones averaging over 20 points per game. And when they play ranked teams and an early turnover, Johnson gets the ball in her hands. Alexis Prince missed some games earlier this year coming back from an injury, and that is a blocking foul call on Joya Carter. That was almost like Mom Premier, not Carter, into Prince. Tyna Napier, Jesse Dickerson, and Cameron Inouye, our officials tonight. Nina Davis with the ball in her hands. Setting a screen for Alexis Jones, who is from Texas. And was recruited by Baylor out of high school, decided to go to Duke, and a good start for the Bears. Alexis Prince missed the early part of the season because she had knee surgery, had to have a meniscus repaired, but that's another scoring threat for the Baylor Bears. She was able to knock down the three, only her 10th made three of the year, and that's an offensive rebound. Good opportunity wasted by Kaylin Williams. Baylor getting the ball down the court quickly. Prince, that's a very risky pass, and it goes off of Jones's hands out of bounds, and a very early substitution now for Oklahoma as Viennese Pierre-Louis comes in. Sophomore from Lake Worth, Florida, and Sherry Cole says that she thinks Pierre-Louis is the most improved player in the league this year. Well, Oklahoma needed her in their last game against Kansas. She put up 20 points in the paint for Oklahoma. Hit eight of nine shots. Oklahoma scared, uh, actually struggled against Kansas, a team that has not won a league game this year. Jones goes from fast to faster. Montpierre picks it up and puts it in. Montpremier with her first basket, and it's 8-0 Baylor. Oklahoma actually beat Baylor on this floor last year. And that's an extra step. But they've got a foul before the travel. Pierre-Louis 
plays going against Montpierre. It was almost as if she hooked her with her arm. I don't. I think that should have been a no call. Maybe a travel. Mom Premier got her, put her legs into Pierre Louis a little bit. Both of those players, Haitian descent, so the great French names. Outside shot off the mark. And rebound chased down by Nina Davis, who quickly gets it up to Johnson. It must be such a luxury to look for number two and just get the ball in her hands. Mom Premier, freshman with the miss. Pierre Louis comes up with the rebound. Now up at home are going to try to push it, and then if they don't push it, look for them to bleed the shot clock as much as they can. The one thing that you will see is that Oklahoma, they don't panic, and they will execute down the stretch if they don't get the shot off, and more times than not, they'll come off a ball screen or use a ball fake. Gabby Ortiz stepped on the baseline, so the ball goes back over to Kim Mulkey's team. I'm, wanting, I'm pulling for Oklahoma to score so their fans can sit down so that we can see yes. courtside. Fans will sit down once they get their first bucket. Contact but no foul as Jones went in and then a hell ball called. Here to be a little frustrated underneath. But Oklahoma gets the basketball almost three minutes in and the Sooners, who average about 70 and a half points per game, have yet to put anything up on the board. Well, the thing that we're used to seeing is Oklahoma shooting the three ball. And right now, they've been trying to pound the ball inside. I think they got to free up their shooter some and let them look, pull the trigger a little bit from the three-point line. They do average six made threes per game, but the percentage in lead games is worst in the Big 12. And now everybody can sit down because Maddie Manning has scored a bucket. Manning missed a couple of years out with the knee injury, still has a brace on the left knee. Davis left open, and that is one of the funkiest deliveries I've ever seen for a shooter, and yet it's effective. As long as it goes in, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Davis, six in the league and scoring 12th in rebounding. And she's really been moved to have to really work on her perimeter scoring because of the size of the freshman post players. We talked about Nia Johnson and her ability to accumulate assists, the patience that she had. She caught the ball, defense shifts, then on the drive, knew that Nina Davis was going to be available at the elbow. No one in the history of the Big 12 has more assists than Nia Johnson. Senior, who was on the radar of a lot of WNBA teams. That's just a good pass and a foul as Mom Premier tried to get a basket. Oklahoma in a 1-3-1 trying to create some turnovers, trapping up high. And the key to a 1-3-1 going against a 1-3-1 is that diagonal pass. Mom Premier, how about this for a freshman? She didn't get a single B last semester, a 4.0 GPA. In a good way, not getting a B. That's what you did when you were in college, From right? From the other end, yes. Didn't get a B the first semester. <laughs> Mom Premier got all A's. She is from Miami. Top freshman rebounder in the Big 12. And Baylor out to a big 11-2 lead. Mom Premier gets another errant Oklahoma pass. Johnson on the run. Jones spots up for three off the mark. And Mom Premier somehow was able to get her hands on the ball with the putback after Pierre Louis looked like she was going to get it. I was in Waco in the early fall when the freshmen were just getting started and Montpierre Premier was so shy to talk to, but she does not play shy, no. not one bit. Her game does a lot of the talking for her. She's got five points. Jones dribbles off the rim and it's Oklahoma basketball. Sherry Cole going to the bench. Peyton Little goes out. What Oklahoma's looking to do now is to go with some speed, go with some penetrating opportunity, because Baylor's in a man-to-man. -man. They're out guarding you wide, so put the ball on the deck. At least try to get yourself to the free throw line. That's when Oklahoma has been able to experience success. Anisia Williams coming in. And with Tiana Edwards, who just missed that shot. Edwards undersized, but... 
can do some things for them offensively. Baylor out to a big lead as we hit our first time out. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Delta. Keep climbing. And in part by Pizza Hut. Introducing stuffed garlic knots pizza only at Pizza Hut. Oklahoma has hit just one of its first seven shots. They're trailing number four Baylor 13 to two here in the first quarter. Pam Ward joined by Carolyn Peck and uh, turnovers also hurting the Sooners early. Well, they, the turnovers are hurting the Sooners, but also the paint production by the freshmen have really been very helpful for Baylor. Beatrice Mumpierre came into the ball game and went to work inside. She already has five points for this uh, Baylor team that usually does score a lot of points in the paint throughout the season. In fact, what, 44 points per game for Baylor comes inside the lane. Well, the, the impact of the post players for Baylor, it's not only the production offensively of 40, almost 44 points a game, they only allow under 20 points a game from their opponents. Yes. So Oklahoma's going to have to be able to knock down some perimeter shots. Some shots, period. Right now there was a steal taken away by Lanicia Williams, a sophomore from Oklahoma City, which is about 20 minutes away from Norman. Mary Cole trying to get something going. This is not a tall team. Manning with the miss. And then a fresh 30. Pierre Louis got it knocked and ground away, excuse me. Mom Premier with good defense. And now Mom Premier trying to finish on the other end, took steps, and they got her for it. Super Tuesday coming up tomorrow night. We've got Avery Johnson's Crimson Tide taking on Kentucky men's basketball. And then we head over to the Big Ten. Denzel Valentine and the Spartans take on the Buckeyes in Columbus. Both games also streaming live on Watch ESPN. And the ESPN app is the college basketball regular season is winding down. It's got one more week coming up in women's basketball. And then the conference tournaments get underway. The Big 12 tournament will be held up the road this year in Oklahoma City. Yeah, we got champ week <laughs> around the corner. There's a lot of things to be decided, especially who's going to be in that final 64 bracket for the NCAA tournament. And Kalani Brown, number 21 in right. This is in white. This is the other freshman post player that has made a big impact for Baylor. She has checked in for Mom Premier and forced the turnover right away. Nina Davis, good in the open court, but that's a terrific play by Carter to knock it away, and it's Sooner basketball. And Nina Davis, I think just one dribble too many in, in transition. Davis, just a junior from Memphis, Tennessee. I love, love, love. Nina Davis. I love her energy. I love how hard she plays. She's an undersized post player, but dominates on the glass. Coming off a game against Iowa State, in which she only had six points, was just two of nine from the floor, but Baylor was able to win that game comfortably by 37 points. I'd say that's comfortable. They are steep, just storming through the Big 12 this year, and a whistle and a travel call. So another turnover for Oklahoma. And Sherry Cole agrees. She, she clapped her hands that that was a good call, but there was a travel. Seven turnovers now for Oklahoma that have been converted into seven points for Baylor. Oklahoma's gone over three and a half minutes now without scoring. Just the Maddie Manning basket to show for their efforts. Tiana Edwards in the open court draws the foul from Alexis Jones, who says, who me? And you like this little Tiana Edwards, don't you? She has got jets. <laughs> I mean, she is quick on quick. Junior from Spencer, Oklahoma, second team academic Big 12 last year. Only averaged about a point and a half per game last year, up to about four and a half points this year. But she comes in and gives them a lot of a lot of energy. In fact, her career high was 11 points at Baylor earlier this year. And Terry Cole told us that she was going to use Edwards on Nia Johnson because in order for Baylor to be successful, Nia Johnson's got to play a lot of minutes. And so Sherry Cole's going to try to run a lot of different players at Johnson and try to wear her down. But I've not seen 
Johnson get tired. Yeah, and then Cherry Cole admitted that too, that it's a tall task, but she wants Edwards to at least turn her a little bit when Edwards is out defending her. Oklahoma again in this 1-3-1. One, one. Alexis Jones inside to Brown. That is a nifty pass that Brown converts. Well, Brown is 6-7. Oklahoma doesn't have anybody that can play with that height. And they give the assist to Christy Wallace, number one in white. She's an Australian. Carter with the miss, and Oklahoma's getting no second chances. Lena Davis slices inside and is fouled. That's two on Pierre Louis. That's a player that Oklahoma cannot spare. 6 4, their tallest player. You know what's fun is watching Nia Johnson and the patience and timing of when she gives the basketball up. It, it's like she knows what, what her teammates can do when they get the ball and gives them the basketball when they're in the position to be most effective. Nina Davis, only a 67% free throw shooter on the season, gets the, the first one to go. And Nina Davis wants to get into Carolyn Peck's line of work. And she'd be great. She is Miss Personality. One of two from the line. She's got that southern accent, so she would sit <laughs> here just fine. Yeah, she would fit in with you. There's a lot of extra work, community work in the Waco area. The team up big, 16 to four. KK Williams checking in, and that's a nice move for the senior. She is Oklahoma's leading scorer and rebounder this season, her first basket tonight. Ball goes off of Johnson's hands. Rare turnover for Kim Mulkey's team. They've won 14 straight games. They are 8-0 against ranked teams this year. Again, their only loss was to Oklahoma State. Did not play UConn, unlike Notre Dame and South Carolina. Williams making an impact. Four quick points, and the crowd getting into it as the lead is sliced down to eight. Johnson being hounded out there by Edwards. And the smallest player on the floor gets the rebound. Maddie Manning with the offhand, can't get it to fall, and the rebound taken down by Khadijah Cave. This is a deep Baylor team. They have, especially in the post position, they're a little bit shallow in the guard spot, but post-wise, they can keep bringing size after size in on you. Jones with the miss. She is just one for five from the floor, hit a three earlier tonight. playing that man-to-man -man defense. And another good move by Kaylin Williams, but she was unable to finish. Oklahoma getting back to try to stem the tide of Baylor's transition game as we see if Baylor will get the final shot of the quarter. Cave coming up to set the screen for Johnson. And she trips but kept her dribble going. Wallace from the outside off the front of the rim. And with that, the first quarter comes to a close. Number four, Baylor leading Oklahoma 16-8. Back to Norman, part of Play for K, a fundraising initiative benefiting the K-Yow Cancer Fund. Carolyn Peck now standing by with Executive Director Stephanie Glantz. Stephanie, it has been so great to see so many pr play for Kay. What made you decide to come here? Well, actually, Sherry Cole is the president of our board of directors for the KL Cancer Fund. So it was a great time to come and see her play for Kay game. And then I was at both shoot-arounds today and got to visit with both coaches. So it's just a wonderful event. It's great to be here. Now, with it going on, play for Kay in all 50 states. What do you think Coach Al would think about this? First of all, she would be very humble. Secondly, she would be very grateful. And thirdly, I think she would say, 
come on, y'all. We can do more. We can make a greater difference in the fight against all women's cancers, and we will. And I think that's what she would say if she were here today. I think Coach Yow would be very, very proud. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you, Coach. Pam. Coach Kay Yow, the former head coach at NC State, passed away in January of 2009 after a very valiant battle against cancer when she was first diagnosed in 1987. Shot clock winding down here. Alexis Jones short on the three, and Cameron Williams is able to chase it down. Baylor has hit only one of its last six shots. Oklahoma worse, just two of its last 12. Jones, let's see what the call is. It's a block against Oklahoma, and the basket counts. You could tell that Alexis Jones had scoring on her mind. There was no pass in her thought process. She was going length of the court. And the defense wasn't able to get there. Kaylin Williams, since she's come into the ball game, though, she has been an impact on the offensive end, also defensively and rotation. She just was a step late getting there against Alexis Jones. Jones with four points. Outside shot, as you mentioned, Carolyn, they really are going to have to depend on the three, and that shot was missed by Derricka Wyatt. Sherry Cole trying all sorts of different combinations to try to get this offense jump-started. Kim Mulkey was not pleased with Khadijah Cave missing that layup. Oklahoma just 3 of 18 from the floor. That's 17%. When you watch, too, when Oklahoma shoots the basketball, they got three retreating back, so there's only two people going to the offensive boards. Williams with a good seal on Cave. And Kaylin Williams has had a couple of opportunities and has not been able to take advantage. She got called for the foul. Support the KYO Cancer Fund in partnership with the WBCA and the Beef Foundation. Donate at KYO.com. Funds raised will go to women's cancer research. And there is Jan Ross who has been with Sherry Cole all 20 years here. They were college teammates together, and she beat breast cancer a few years ago. That yeah, was great to hear Jan talking about that she was feeling great. So good to see her here. Certainly cancer touching just about everybody's lives and a great initiative to raise money for the KYAL Fund. Nina Davis splashes one home. And it's now 20 to 8 in favor of Baylor. And another foul called on the perimeter. They're going to get Cave. Her first. Baylor's first team foul. Five team fouls per quarter. Then you go to the line on the bonus. And McKenna Treese with the miss in the paint. Davis just slicing in there. Khadija Kay is having a hard time hanging on to the basketball. Maddie Manning with the ball in her hands, being guarded by Davis, gets a screen, but Davis recovered. And finally, the three falls. McKenna Treese, a sophomore from the state of Missouri, that's just her ninth made three of the season. When you come to Oklahoma, if you're wearing Oklahoma across your chest, that means you can shoot the three. They have had some great ones over the years. Prince guarded by Ortiz. That's a mismatch. Prince with the size advantage, but left it short. Gabby Ortiz, the sophomore who started as a freshman at point, off balance. And she has had a, a year in which she has struggled. Sherry Cole talked to us about that earlier today. Johnson, on the other hand, the point guard for Baylor, not struggling. No. <laughs> She's so smart with the basketball. She recognizes when the opportunity presents itself. She stays and keeps the defense retreating and stays in attack mode. She is also one of four players for Baylor who already have their degree, and that looked awesome. Not if you're Sherry Cole, who quickly calls that timeout. Johnson with four quick points. Baylor in control.
and were not tested in this one. Plus, highlights of South Carolina rolling over Alabama. Guard plays, sure, but also the big stood tall. Rebecca Lobo will break that down for you. Coming up at the half. Pam, back to you. Thank you very much. And here, Baylor very much in control over Oklahoma, leading 24-11 to in the second quarter. Baylor, like the teams in front of them, South Carolina and Notre Dame, with just one loss on the season. And Edwards gets her first field goal of the game. Oklahoma shooting under 20% so far. Well, I think Baylor is trying to send a message. They really were upset when they lost to Oklahoma State. Felt like that would hurt their number one seed. So they're trying to secure and demonstrate they deserve to keep that one spot. Edwards finding Carter underneath. Joya Carter's first basket. And a timeout taken. Oklahoma showing some life, so Baylor calls a timeout. ESPN and ESPN app. NBA countdown begins it all. That's charged by... Duke. Oklahoma with four quick points, so Kim Mulkey called the timeout. Inside, they get it to Brown, the height advantage, and they worked it that time. Making the defense have to shift, and when you've got a post player that's 6'7", throw it to the corner of the backboard, nobody can get there but her. Ronnie Brown today named the Big 12 Freshman of the Week, averaged 11 points and six rebounds, and wins over Oklahoma State and Iowa State. Chiefs swinging it around. Shot clock into single digits. And a foul. Oklahoma. And look who's here. Speaking of the NBA, I think we'll see that young man in the ball cap in the NBA next year. Buddy Heald. What a fun player to watch for the Oklahoma he Sooners. Can shoot it, man. Saw him a little bit when they were practicing today. Brown, two in a row. Good room to the big girl. Brown, the third leading scorer for Baylor, and that's a shot you just got to make. Just the impact of the post players for Baylor in the paint. Jones gets fouled and will head to the free throw line after she absolutely blew by McKenna Treese on the perimeter. Yeah, on the drive. Second foul on Joya Carter. Good to see Alexis Jones back. We saw her tear her ACL against Notre Dame a couple of years ago when she still played for Duke, and we asked her about it yesterday, and she said, yeah, but I still made the basket. She made the bucket <laughs> as she was tearing her oh, ACL. Oh, yeah, she said to be sure and yep. make a point that she yep, made the she basket. She sure did, but that was her last game in a Duke uniform. She is a native of Irving, Texas, outside of Dallas, so she transferred back to home. Her dad, David, has been able to make it to just about every game. Well, I told you I was here in the fall, and she was still wearing a knee brace and still working to get herself in shape. She said she had to do a lot of practice, get up a lot of extra shots. She did some extra conditioning so that she'd be ready to play, especially come Big 12 time. Really starting to blossom, has done very well against ranked teams this year. Brown has it go off the mark, and Johnson, not only can she assist well, she's also a very good rebounding guard. It's almost like you wish you had a little tentacle that could, you could hear or what she's thinking, what goes in her mind every time she has the basketball in her hand. Averaging over five rebounds per game, and Kim Mulkey absolutely hit the jackpot getting that point guard. Mulkey wasn't so bad as a point guard herself. Oh, no, she was really good with Louisiana Tech and with Team USA. Davis thought she got all ball, but she has been whistled for her first personal foul. Well, I think that Davis had her hand on the basketball up high, but if she had her hand on the waist, and that's where she got called for the foul. McKenna Treese, now three of five on the season from the free throw line. 6'4", sophomore center from St. Peter's, Missouri. She has four points tonight, and Oklahoma down by 14. 
Johnson bringing the ball up. Look back at Coach Mulkey to get some instructions. Well, because now Oklahoma has changed to a 2-3 zone. We've seen man-to-man. -man, we've seen the 1-3-1. One, one. Now they've dropped into a 2-3. They're trying to really stop the bleeding of Baylor being able to score in the paint. Williams heading out. This is Prince. Number 12 back in. Sets the screen. Jones goes inside. How did she find Nina Davis? Because my eye was on Kalani Brown. On the other side of the block. Yeah, Nina Davis just snuck in on that ball side block. That was a terrific assist for Alexis Jones, who's second on this team in assists. She's fourth in the league in assists. Nia Johnson is first because she's first in the nation. Abby Ortiz inside. And that is her first basket, averaging seven and a half points per game. Last year, the Big 12 Freshman of the Year. But struggling a little bit. Coach Cole says it's sort of like the uh, stereotypical sophomore slump. And still out there battling. Davis and Manning absolutely tangled up, going for the rebound. To watch, the thing you want to do against the zone is to get in that Big 12 area. The defense collapses, and she does the wraparound pass around trees. That was sweet. This is the foul that just was committed. They called it on Manning, and that's why the crowd was, was surly about it. Well, when you're going after 50-50 balls with Nina Davis, more times than not, you're going to lose. <laughs> she doesn't give up on the play. And Davis, her numbers are down from last year. Scoring average is down, averaging about 16 per game. Last year, uh, over 21, but she says she doesn't really care about that. She wants to get to the Final Four, wants to battle for a national championship. You know, I love her attitude. Even when she went to go play with Team USA, made the World Championship team, knew she was going to have to play the three. She said, I don't care where you put me. I just want to be on the team and contribute whatever the team needs. And she brought that same attitude back to her Baylor team. Talked about how she was pushed to be an even better player, playing with Team USA, the best in the world. And she's pretty good, too. Maya Johnson hits that jumper. She's got six points. Only averages seven per game. Reese aggressively to the basket, got fouled. Trying to get some points from the free throw line. And free throws have been very important for Oklahoma. Well, in their last six games, they're three and three. In the three games they won, they had more free throw attempts than their opponents. In the three that they lost, their opponents had more free throw attempts. They have beaten the last three top ten teams they have played at home, in, including when they beat Baylor here last year. And in those three games, they made more free throws than their opponents attempted. So that's a very important statistic, and Baylor certainly was aware of it coming into this game. Well, the thing with the style that Oklahoma plays, they shoot the three. So it extends your defense. Now, what Oklahoma has, when they win, they don't, they don't live and die by the three, but they put the ball on the deck and attack, and then they're getting themselves to the free throw line. Johnson able to get in there, keep it alive momentarily, but Edwards comes up with it. Oklahoma down 14, and Johnson headed her off right at the pass. And then a whistle. Johnson called for her first personal foul. Five team fouls against Oklahoma. That's the fourth for Baylor, so both teams in the bonus the rest of the second quarter. Peyton Little has been very quiet in this game. Number 10 in pink for Oklahoma. Edwards had all the time in the world and buried it. Edwards trims the lead back down to 11. She was 1 for 15 from 3 on the season before she hit that one. She was excited. I know. <laughs> Wouldn't you be? Absolutely. Super Tuesday, we've got Avery Johnson's Crimson Tide taking on Kentucky at 7 Eastern, then Big Ten action, Denzel Valentine and 
Michigan State taking on the Buckeyes. Both games streaming live on Watch ESPN and the ESPN app coming up tomorrow. I can tell you a lot of people are excited about what Avery Johnson has done in turning Alabama around. Get to see them tomorrow night on Super Tuesday. Johnson, eight points now and four assists. She is already over her season average of seven points per game as we hit one minute to go in the half. Hit Little with the miss. Boy, Cameron Williams has worked so hard. Has missed some shots, but got that second chance to fall and was fouled. The second effort by the big girl getting on the glass. Doesn't go the first time, but the second time. And not only does she get the bucket, but she gets to go to the free throw. Williams just three of nine from the floor. Does have six rebounds. And she has given Sherry Cole some good minutes. And the lead is back down to 10. Oklahoma just nine of 30 from the floor, but still hanging around. Now Oklahoma going back to a man-to-man. Alexis Jones picks up a dribble. Inside to Brown, the 6'7 freshman. Can't stop that. Finishing with that left hand. I love to see these big players for Baylor being able to score going both directions. Brown now joins Johnson as the leading scorer for Baylor. They both have eight points. Oklahoma needs to get a big three from Peyton Little going into the half. That would be a great momentum swing. She was 0 for 3 from the floor. Little is her second leading scorer this year. It's been shut out. Manning gets it off glass. Well, Oklahoma with a little bit of a spurt to Go down into the locker room at the half, trailing by 10. Nia Johnson, another solid effort. Eight, four, and four for a great point guard. Well, Nia Johnson, she sees the floor so well. It's got to spread the width for the Oklahoma City, for the and Baylor. Land Rover halftime report coming up. All right, as we need the Land Rover halftime report, thank you very much, ladies. Let's kick it off first with Notre Dame taking on Florida State earlier tonight on ESPN. Long said Rebecca Lobo. I'm Adnan Burke. This is Agunbowale, Jenny on the three. Oh, I like the way you say her name. 28 points off the bench for Notre Dame. Once again, the freshman off the bench getting it done. Just rolls off the tongue with the ball rolls off the fingers. <laughs> Michaela Mabry here for three. Notre Dame up 17. They were not tested at this point. Yeah, they got a big lead early. So good from the three-point line in the first half. And then Mabry would be hitting another three. And we missed the reaction shot of Skylar Dickens, but let me tell you, she loved it. Notre Dame wins at 73-66. to You look at Notre Dame by opponent the last three seasons versus UConn. Clearly, Rebecca, they've had some challenges against everybody else, 99-1. Notre Dame's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, that's what that tells you. And so is UConn, evidenced by that graphic. Other highlights for you, South Carolina taking on number, uh, number three South Carolina, I should say, taking on Alabama. The Gamecocks were properly getting fired up here, yeah. That's kind of like our pre-show routine. Asia Wilson, the bucket. Yeah, the bigs are really good for South Carolina today. Wilson and Coates, 29 points, 28 boards between them. Later in the second, Tiffany Mitchell with a three, and South Carolina was up by 12. And later on, it would be Alabama with the ball and Bianca Cuevas with the steal and shows off a little razzle-dazzle. Let's just appreciate this for a second. Woo! Beautiful pass by Cuevas. That's what she does. Lights it up a little bit. And so South Carolina rolls to the victory over Alabama, the top team in the SEC. They win it by 20. So the NCAA tournament top seeds, according to our bracketologist, Charlie Cream, the cream of the crop here, the one seeds are UConn, South Carolina, Notre Dame, and Baylor. The two seeds are Ohio State, Texas, Oregon State, and Arizona State. That was entering today. And so the question often becomes, Rebecca, as we're nearing to March, who, if any of these teams, can knock off UConn? Well, I think when you look at Connecticut and what you need to do to be able to beat them, you have to be able to score mm -hmm. and, and score at a high clip, and you have to be able to play at least a little bit of defense. And the teams on that list who are very good at that, I think Notre Dame, number one. When they played Connecticut early in the year, they did not have Brianna Turner. They hit a ton of threes. They are a team that is dangerous. Baylor is the other one to me. We're seeing them tonight because of their depth, their ability to score and defend. And a team that's not on this list that's interesting to me is Ohio State. They can really score. 
score. And they started off the season not a very good defensive basketball team, but they're getting much better on that end of the floor. So come tournament time, possible Final Four Elite Eight meeting, would they have enough defensively to, to run with Connecticut? I'm curious, South Carolina third right now in the country, but you don't see them as a viable contender against UConn. What's the issue there? They're a contender. They're right. a contender. I just think that South Carolina struggles to score at times. They've had multiple uh, quarters this season where they've only scored in single digits, and you simply can't have those lapses against Connecticut. When they played earlier in the year on their home floor, ended up being a 12-point game, but it felt uh, bigger than that. So I think because of their lack of um, – just weapons at times and efficiency on the offensive end, they can struggle. Yeah, as you said, that was your first point. Against UConn, you're going to have to score. Notre Dame, 19 consecutive wins after that loss to UConn back on December 5th. So, uh, once again, according to our bracketologist, Charlie Cream, the last four in, Kansas State, Auburn, Villanova, Purdue, the first four out, Iowa, Temple, Oregon, and St. Bonaventure. Any of those teams stand out to you? Surprises? One team that's interesting to me is Oregon. They can really score. They took UCLA down to the wire this past week. Weekend. And they had some, they, they started their non conference really strong, had some losses, but if they can finish strong in the Pac 12, I think they could be a dangerous team. What's also fascinating is right now, according to Charlie Cream, Minnesota is out, and yet one of the best stories going right now, just in sports, is Rachel Bain. Big Monday presented by Delta, it's also part of our Play for K initiative, and at the half, number four Baylor, once beaten on the year, is leading Oklahoma 38. To 28 as the Big 12 season starts to wind down. Pam Ward along with Carolyn Peck. Now, Oklahoma has done really well the last couple of years playing teams in the top 10 on this floor. One key has been getting the line, which they haven't done a lot of tonight. They've only got there eight times, but I think if they stay in the mentality to continue to attack the paint, that could increase those opportunities. A little Nia Johnson mentality never hurts anybody. She has been terrific, the, the best point guard right now in the country assist-wise. Well, we talked about the three things that she does so well. She sees the floor. Her court vision is excellent. And you see that she's very patient. She recognizes where to take the defense to open up her teammates. Then, like her timing, she knows that Nina Davis can hit that elbow jumper. And then court vision, she recognized when Alexis Jones was going to pop out. Defense wasn't there, gave her an open opportunity. But now we talked about what Oklahoma needs to continue to do, and that's to attack the paint. That time you saw Maddie Matting attack. Kylie, Will Kylie Williams came into the ball game, and she had an impact in the paint. And I believe that Sherry Cole will go back to that in this third quarter. Baylor led by as many as 16 points. In the second quarter, Sherry Cole's club cutting it down to 10. Kim Mulkey trying to get her team back to the Final Four for the first time since 2012 when they won the second of their two national championships. And the second half is underway. Nye Johnson, the Big 12 Player of the Week, gets it over to Alexis Jones. And Oklahoma in a straight 2-3 defense. Right away, they go underneath the mom Premier. Ball knocked away. 19 seconds left on the shot clock. Mom Premier with five points and three rebounds in the first half. Senior starting post. Alexis Prince outside has it rim off. And Maddie Manning was able to come away with the basketball. Peyton Little only actually did not score in the first half. Gabby Ortiz just a couple of points in an early turnover for the Sooners, who were really hurt by turnovers, particularly in the first quarter. They were scoring 11 of its 38 points off Sooner turnovers. Prince with the miss, and there's Peyton Little again, the second leading scorer on this team, but missed all three of her shots in the first half. And two quick Oklahoma turnovers are starting the third quarter like they started the game by throwing the ball away. We see that Kim Mulkey subbed out Alexis Prince because I think Prince was getting caught in between should I pass or should I shoot? And when you're in doubt, I, I don't think you should shoot. It's going to be a bad shot. She might as well pass it, get it back, get another opportunity. Missed 14 games this year, coming back from fighting through some injuries. Prince did not play in the loss to Oklahoma State, neither did Nia Johnson. And there is a three for Christy Wallace, the Australian. Big 12 All-Freshman team last year and has the highest percentage of three-point makes this year for the Lady Bears. 
Manning trying to go back door, and that's three turnovers already in the first just over a minute of the third quarter. Well, against Baylor, you can't telegraph the pass, and especially when Nina Davis is on that baseline or back row of the defense. Jones being guarded by Little, takes her to the hoop and gets fouled. It's interesting watching Kim Mulkey in practice with Alexis Jones. And you, she'll tell her, Jones, shoot the basketball. She wants her to have that attack mentality. And Alexis Jones, first year playing for Baylor. After starting her collegiate career at Duke. You know, when you're a new player coming into a team that's had the success of Baylor, sometimes players can be shy or they can, you know, wait to fit in. Right, and, kind of defer a little bit. Yeah, Kim Mulkey said, uh, uh you come on, you're a part of this. You have got to be ready to contribute. Jones had 25 points against Oklahoma. She had 29 against Texas. That's right, so she has come up big against ranked teams this year. Texas in second place now in the Big 12. Those two teams will play each other to close out the regular season on February 29th. And Oklahoma just continues to turn the ball over here in the third quarter. Ronnie Johnson walking it up. Whoops it inside to Davis. Teresa early sub to get some size in there for the Sooners. Bucky's a little aggravated that Nita Davis is passing out. Premier saves it with the offensive rebound. And now Johnson sets it back up on top. Outside shot is off the mark by Wallace. And the ball goes over to the Sooners. And you saw Right there, Coach Mulkey was yelling at Nina Davis, wants her to do just what you said. Yeah, she, she would. The ball. Yeah, she got the ball. Nina Davis is getting the ball in the paint, but even though she may go against a player that's tall, I've never seen her shy away. She's going to continue to have that scoring mentality. Here, Louise with the miss. Jones up and running. Davis again, her scoring is down this year, but she said it, it is in part because there are so many other weapons on the club, including Christy Wallace. Five points here in the first three minutes of the third quarter. Foul as Carter went into the hoop hard. Baylor right now with its largest lead at 17 points. Well, Jones went for the, the reach around steal instead of moving her feet in that to get in good defensive position. That's frustrating as a coach because you, co players at times will get that steal and it's okay. It's a it's a hero move, but when you do it and you get beat, you're putting the rest of your team in a bad spot. Carter hits the first of two free throws. She has been battling with a groin injury this year. Coach Cole told us that she can't practice all that much. This gets her gets her uh, loosened up the day before a game. Carter averaging about 18 minutes per game. Yeah. And again, looks over to Kim Mulkey for guidance. Jones bottled up. Davis left alone. And it just wouldn't fall. And another offensive rebound for Baylor. Davis with the spin. And the ball goes off Mom Premier's hands to Oklahoma. Now Kaylin Williams checking in. Williams had a really good first half for the Sooners. Seven points and six rebounds. There she is with the basketball, close to a double-double the first time these two teams played with 11 points and nine boards. She wants it back against Mom Premier. And Mom Premier got a hand on it. And then a foul called against Carter. Well, Kaylin Williams, Mom Premier does a nice job of going straight up. 
She may only be 6'4", but her arms go on and on and on. <laughs> that is the third foul on Joya Carter. Wallace coming out firing here. Thought she got fouled on the follow through. Maddie Manning takes it in with her off hand, and it just won't go down for the Sooners. Oklahoma has not scored a field goal in the second half. Alexis Jones, nifty. She is a left-hander and used that strong hand to get into double figures. And a timeout taken by Sherry Cole. Carbon copy of the beginning of the game here in the beginning of the third quarter. Coming up, we'll look at Carolyn Peck's triple threats around the nation. To make a run for a national championship, I think you got to have a triple threat. Connecticut's got it when you look at Jefferson, Stewart, and Tuck. Notre Dame's got their triple threat as well, especially with Agumbawale, the freshman. You have Baylor that now has Alexis Jones, another scoring threat to go with Nina, with Nia Johnson and Nina Davis. And then Oregon State with Ruth the Hammer Hamlin, Jamie Wiesner, and Sydney Weiss. Oregon State number seven in the AP poll that came out today in the Pac-12, the number one RPI for any conference this year. Very deep conference. As we all look to see who will be the other three teams along with UConn in the final four. Is UConn vulnerable before they get to the final four? Well, if the teams that they played throughout the regular season, they find a way to Really, they observe what they can take advantage of, and then they ex they exploit it, and then they've got that that spread. They're tough to beat. They certainly are. They're still unbeaten. We'll take a timeout. Baylor up big. Do something that far exceeds the games and the wins and losses. We invite you to support the KYAL Cancer Fund in partnership with the WBCA and the V Foundation. Donate at KYAL.com. Funds raised will go to the Women's Cancer Research. And there's the president of the board of directors of the KYAL Cancer Fund, Sherry Cole, the head coach for Oklahoma. As Nina Davis misses the first free throw, Coach Cole also issued a challenge to other coaching staffs across the country to chip in and donate for that tremendous cause in honor of Coach Yao. Davis misses them both. Just a 67% free throw shooter on the season. One of the few weaknesses in her arsenal. Oklahoma has not hit a field goal in this quarter. And a good shot fake by Williams draws the foul. Well, Mom Premier picks up her third. Immediately, Kim Monkey's going to make a substitution and pull in Kalani Brown because they worked on covering that offense yesterday, and they said when you recognize the overload, the post player guarding Williams has got to get behind her and push. You can't front so that you get lobbed over. So one freshman subs in for the other. Brown, a freshman from Slidell, Louisiana, Kim Mulkey's home state. McDonald's All-American started for the West squad. And Williams left two points on the free throw line. A big-time struggle for Oklahoma. They have only scored one point in the first five and a half minutes of this quarter. Alexis Jones found a little alley, and then Williams was able there. Thought she got there in time, but instead, Kaylin Williams has picked up her third foul for the Sooners. That's crucial for Oklahoma if Caleb... Kaylin Williams has to go to the bench. I think the problem is what, where Kaylin Williams went wrong is she raised up to absorb the contact instead of just sitting there waiting for it. Alexis Jones gets the first free throw, told us earlier today at shoot-around that it's still a learning experience for her dealing with Coach Kim Mulkey. Joanne McCauley was her coach at Duke. She has a new boss. Well, when you've got you've got a coach like Kim Mulkey that is so animated and so competitive on the sideline, and then knows the game inside and out. You got a lot to learn. 
Williams draws another foul, much to the chagrin of Kalani Brown, who picks up her second. Coach Loki is still one of the most expressive coaches over on the sidelines. Sherry Cole's showing a lot of confidence in her senior post player, playing her with three fouls. Williams with the three fouls, seven points, just three of ten from the floor. And now two of five from the free throw line. And that's only the second point that Oklahoma has scored in the third quarter. Davis started by Treese. Now they go inside to the big girl. Wow, it's six seven. Height advantage over just about anybody else, but especially with this undersized Oklahoma team. And Kaylin Williams has picked up number four, Carolyn. Yeah, that's that's costly for Oklahoma. And you got to know that Baylor was going to continue to go inside and go right at her when she had the, picked up the third foul. Yeah, the calculated risk by Sherry Cole to keep Williams in does not pay off. So KK, as she is known to her teammates, goes out. Denise Pierre-Louis comes in. Williams has worked hard, has not paid off. She's missed seven of her ten shots. I'll tell you, free throws could cost you some championships. Oh, cost you some games, that's for sure. Baylor eighth out of ten teams in the Big 12 and free throw percentage of just over 65%. And Gabby Ortiz with Oklahoma's first field goal of the third quarter. It took them over almost seven minutes. single digits for Wallace who recognizes steps back and hits it that was some cool work by the sophomore from Australia and has played with the Australian under 19 team Kim Mulkey called timeout and I think it's to address the defense watch Alexis Jones she's gonna go for the reach behind and Gabby Ortiz Takes full advantage and attacks the basket. You gotta keep your player in front of you. You gotta play good solid defense. Abby Ortiz, a sophomore from Racine, Wisconsin. Super Tuesday coming up tomorrow night. Avery Johnson's Alabama team takes on number 16, Kentucky. And then we head to Columbus, Ohio for Michigan State, Ohio State. Both games also streaming live on Watch ESPN and the ESPN app. This is our second of two games on Big Monday tonight on the women's side. Earlier today, Notre Dame won in Tallahassee, beating Florida State. So Notre Dame, number two in the country, but number one in RPI. Their lone loss on the season to UConn. The same is true for South Carolina. Notre Dame can shoot the basketball at one point. They were, what, eight of nine from the three-point line when we were watching before we had to prepare for our game. That's a foul on Brown. Nope, they're good. Excuse me, it's not Brown. It was Alexis Jones. That was Jones reaching in, helping in from the guard spot. First points for Pierre Louis. But the coaches from Baylor said that when the post players for Oklahoma, when they're going to make the move, if you're going, you got to sprint and go quick. You can't hesitate and get there late. 16-point advantage for Nia Johnson. And the Baylor Bears, they will finish at Kansas State and then a big one against Texas the last day of February. And there's a turnover. Gabby Ortiz, full speed ahead, got it blocked. And Lonnie Brown got a hand on it. Ortiz, full speed, but you got to recognize 6'7 is standing there waiting on you. 
Discretion, the better part of valor sometimes, but then they score. Off the inbound. That's the second three by McKenna Trace. Only averaging about two and a half points per game. And she has nine. And Joya Carter has just picked up her fourth personal foul for Oklahoma. So both Carter and Kaylin Williams have four for the Sooners. Both teams in the bonus. Jones delivers. Oklahoma really needs to get some offense from Peyton Little, who just came in the game. She can shoot the three. She's just got to she's got to get her feet set. She needs to see the ball go through the basket. Peyton Little has not scored tonight. Jones gets them both. Little number 10 for Oklahoma, averaging 11 and a half points per game, second only to Kaylin Williams. And Terry Cole said she's one of these players that tries. Sometimes she tries too hard, and that. You know, it'll cause you to rush your shot or even rush your form. Brown, more good defense. Peyton Little has not taken a shot in the second half. Transfer from Texas A&M. And another foul just about every time down the floor. Well, you remember when, Nina, when uh, Nina Davis was passing up shots and Kim Mulkey was getting onto it? Well, it's because she's creating opportunities to get to the free throw line. Now she just got to convert once she gets there. Nina Davis with her first points of the third quarter. Kim Mulkey in her 16th year at Baylor. They were 7 and 20 the year before she got there, and she's got a couple of national championships. Little running off the screen, but not going aggressively to the basket. And Brown commits the foul. Pierre Louis knocks it home. This is strength and courage right here, going up against and finding a way to get around the body instead of going over the top of Kalani Brown. So Brown sits down with three fouls. And Viennese completes the three-point play. 14-point advantage, and the fans here at the Lloyd Noble Center asking for a stop. Ball knocked around, but Wallace comes up with it at least momentarily. Everybody hits the deck. Possession arrow is in favor of Oklahoma. But Baylor called the timeout, and they were granted it. And Sherry Cole is coming out on the court. She is beyond angry. You can read her lips. She said, no way, that's a possession. You have to be in possession of the ball in order to call a timeout. Yeah, Christy Wallace has possession of the basketball. It may be hard for Sherry Cole to see from that end of the court, but she's cradled the basketball and forming her hand to call the timeout. Granted it right before Maddie Manning stuck her hands in there for what would have been a tie-up. So 11 seconds left on the shot clock. Johnson inbounds to Wallace, who left it well short. And Khadija Ga Cave couldn't save it. One minute to go in the third quarter. Manning, too tentative, couldn't get the shot off, and then Wallace is called for the foul on the drive. First one on the Aussie after the old... Iowa State West Virginia game over on ESPN. Stick around for Sports Center at night with John Anderson and Steve Levy, also streaming live on Watch ESPN.
and the ESPN app. They're going to have some spring training news. Baseball, Carolyn, it's coming. I can't believe fired up that the spring this year has gone by so fast. But before that happens, we got Champ Week. Oh, yeah. We got some conference tournaments. Then we got the NCAA Women's Tournament. Then you can talk to me about some baseball. Uh, Maddie Manning gets the free throw. Maddie, a great story. She's from the state of Iowa. A couple of knee injuries. She did not play for 719 days. Yeah, bless her heart. She tore her ACL in her freshman year. And then again, another ACL in her red shirt freshman season. It's a 12-point game. Alexis Jones goes by Peyton Little, gets it out to Nye Johnson, left open, nothing doing, and an opportunity now for the Sooners. If they can get this even close to a 10-point lead, that'll be a, a victory for them, and Gabby Ortiz knocks down the three. It is a nine-point lead for the Lady Bears. They flatten it out for Nia Johnson. Cave comes with the screen, gets it, and just skips it in. That's a big shot for Cave, but a bigger shot for Gabby Ortiz as her three gets them at least within shouting distance. Oklahoma, you know they can shoot the three. Don't get comfortable. Come on back to this fourth quarter. UConn taking on South Florida. That is a week from tonight on ESPN2, part of Big Monday as the regular season comes to a close next week. UConn has never lost a game in the American Conference, either regular season or during the tournament. This is the third year of that league. Ron Premier comes up with the rebound. Oklahoma trailed by as many as 19 in the third quarter. And they come in down 11 as we start the fourth. Well, the scoring in that third quarter really didn't start happening to the last about three, four minutes. That's when Oklahoma really got things in here. Got a big three from Gabby Ortiz and another foul call. There were a lot of fouls called in the third quarter as well. Lots of stuff going on nationally. The biggest story, how about over 31 years since Tennessee was unranked? They dropped out of the AP poll today. Rachel Bannon passing Kelly Mazzani, all-time scoring record. Harry Pareto with his 700th win with Villanova. But how about Bannon? Had a 60-point game earlier this year. That was triple overtime. 52 points in regulation against Michigan State. But I don't understand how a player can score that many points against Michigan State, but they lost. They did. That's tough. Ariel Powers had she is very good yeah. for Michigan State in that game. Prince with the miss. Mom Premier comes up with it. Steps around Treese and scored. People here wanted to travel. I think that was just a nifty move. No, she traveled. She you took, did, I'm wrong? Yeah, she took some Flintstone steps. Okay. Those little, little, little European steps. steps. Yeah. When she was given credit for the basket. Mom Premier with seven points and eight rebounds. Maddie Manning, by the way, setting a new career high with eight rebounds for OU. While Khadijah Cave was in the game for Baylor and their two freshmen, Mom Premier and Brown were at the end of the bench. Kim Mulkey had walked herself down there. She was doing some coaching. She was giving some constructive criticism to her freshmen sitting at the end of the bench. She is a very hands-on coach. Does not pull any punches. Brutally honest. <laughs> You know, and how she handles her players in practice when they you know, they make a mistake, whether it be a breakdown offensively or defensively, she talks to them about, what are you thinking? You see her there talking with Alexis Jones. <laughs> I mean, Alexis Prince trying to plead her case. Prince just goes to the end, and she's not going to win that battle. Have a seat, baby girl. You would like a coach when you know exactly where you stand. There's probably not a lot of gray area there. No, that's true. 
on Premier. She's going to be really good, hey? Oh, man. I mean, the way that she can finish with her left and her right hand, and then you saw Kim Mulkey look right at Kalani Brown after Mon Premier scored. She's making a point. There's a learning situation whether you're on the court or not. Just a freshman, as is Kalani Brown, two very talented post players and their babies. Manning challenging Mon Premier to just cut down. Johnson going to slow things down. Looks over to the boss and tells her to push it a little bit. Johnson getting around Ortiz and then ran into McKenna Treese. So Tennessee is out of the top 25 for the first time in over 31 years. This after losing to LSU this past week. And now UConn has the number one longest streak in the AP. And they would have to stay in the top 25 for seven more years to tie Tennessee's streak, which was just broken. Not that it's out of the realm of possibility because it's UConn, but that just tells you how impressive that streak is. Or what? Yeah. Just a, it's a very surprising year. 11 losses, ties for the most ever. Yeah, with as much talent that's on that team not being able to come together to pull off the wins. Ortiz knocking down the three. Gabby Ortiz with a couple of big threes in the second half. And it's only an eight-point lead for Baylor. Telling you, with the way Oklahoma can shoot the three, no lead is comfortable. Maddie Manning, great hustle. Unable to corral it, but all of her teammates come over to say way to go. Ortiz just steps back. Christy Wallace gave her space. The sophomore point guard knocks down the three. Ortiz was the Big 12's freshman of the year last year. First true freshman to start at point guard for Sherry Cole since Stacy Dales, who led this team to the championship game in 2002. Shot clock winding down and a travel. Oklahoma forces the turnover. You know, this game is big for Oklahoma because they're fighting to, to stay or maintain a third position in the Big 12. West Virginia, Oklahoma State, Texas, Baylor, those are the teams in front of them. And here come the Sooners, Caleb Williams. And the lead is six with six minutes to go. On Premier underneath was grabbed and will head to the free throw line. Oklahoma down by 19 points in the third quarter, looked dead in the water, but they're still in it. Sherry Cole has never panicked, and her team has kept their same composure because their head coach has. Third foul on Manning, Mom Premier, with the miss at the line. She has nine points tonight, but it's just one of three from the free throw line. One of four. We talked about Baylor. One of their weaknesses is free throw shooting. And it could come back to bite them tonight. Williams. Kaylin Williams working hard. Gets rewarded. Grabbed by Mom Premier. Maddie Manning's hustle continuing to pay off. Mom Premier with three fouls heads to the bench. Alexis Prince in for Wallace. As Baylor tries to stem this tie by the Sooners. Pierre Louis coming in now for Kaylin Williams, who gets a very well deserved. Ovation from this crowd. 
remember Oklahoma has knocked off the last three top ten teams in the country here at home. Here on the wing, yes! Two-point ball game on a 9-0 Oklahoma run. Alexis Jones finally gets some points for Baylor. Pierre Louis working inside, gets bottled up. They bring the guard Johnson to help, and another foul is called. This one on Johnson. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Delta. Keep climbing. Welcome back. Baylor led by many is 19 points in the third quarter. And the last time out, Maddie Manning fired up, as is the rest of her teammates. As they went into the huddle, they cut the lead to two. Now it's a four-point advantage for once beaten and number four Baylor as Pierre-Louis goes to the free throw line. Oklahoma at the half only had eight free throw attempts. That was the 21st attempt of the game for the Sooners. First miss at the line for Pierre-Louis. Now four or five from the charity stripe. She's in the double figures. Oklahoma trying to knock off its fourth straight top ten opponent on this floor in the last two seasons. And Alexis Jones coming up big. She's at the last two shots from the floor for the Lady Bears. Jones has 18 points in the last win period against any top five opponent. Was Baylor right here on this floor almost a year ago. A foul call. Pierre Louis comes up limping. And foul called on Oklahoma. They're going to get Peyton Little. Pierre Louis came up limping as she trailed the play. And she's replaced now by Kaylin Williams. Pierre Louis last year. Only averaged four points per game. Now up to nine and a half per game for the Sooners. Inside four minutes. Johnson working against Ortiz. Trying to draw the foul, didn't get it. Prince cleans up. Alexis Prince, just her fourth and fifth points of the night. Williams got creative and was able somehow to get around Brown. 14 and 7 for the redshirt senior. Alexis Jones. Six big points in the last couple of minutes after Oklahoma had cut it to a two-point lead. Alexis Jones is a one-man offense. It's just the breakdown going right at Manny Manning. She's not able, Manning's not able to guard Alexis Jones off the bounds. Jones has been able to make Manning recover back, retreat defensively, and then pull up for that jumper. Jones with 20 points tonight, had a team high 25 the first time these two teams played in Waco this year. Ortiz misses that three after hitting a couple in this half. And now Nye Johnson going to slow things down. Two and a half to go. Alexis Jones gives it up to Mark Premier. Pulls it out. Johnson with the miss, batted it, tried to keep it alive. It goes out of bounds. 
and it is Oklahoma basketball. Four minutes to go in the third quarter. Kim Mulkey's team is up by 19. Oklahoma cut it to two here in the fourth. And now Baylor nursing a seven-point lead as we approach two minutes. Kaylin Williams working on Mom Premier gets doubled, left it short. Baylor has won their last three games by an average of 31 points. Wins over Iowa State, Oklahoma State, and Texas Tech, and they're getting a game here from Oklahoma. Jones into Davis, and that is the first field goal scored by Nina Davis in this half. Wow, but it's a fantastic dime drop by Alexis Jones. I mean, she's left-handed, but that was real pretty on the left side as Davis is cut into the basket, and then Davis gets the finish. Alan Williams has fouled out. 14 points, 8 rebounds. She also fouled out the first time these two teams played. And the Davis can't complete the three-point play. In close games, as you mentioned, this free throw malaise could hurt them as the season progresses and the games get more important. Oklahoma still hustling, going after the ball, but the possession arrow points towards Baylor. Oklahoma has gone to 16 straight NCAA tournaments. Lost in the second round to Stanford last year in Palo Alto. They've won 10 Big 12 championships, six in the regular season, four tournaments. You know, Sherry Cole just wants to get the right position for that Big 12 tournament and then have her team, everything click and come together at the right time. Big 12 tournament being held in Oklahoma City. How about Baylor? They are going for their sixth straight regular season championship in the Big 12. And if they win the tournament, that would be their sixth in a row. And that's saying something. This is a pretty good league. Well, especially for a team that started the Big 12 season with a loss. And then, you know, so far they've run off 14 straight. And Kim Mulkey talks about how tough that is. I mean, it could have been demoralizing to lose that first game, but they use it as a positive. It's a point of reference to point to to keep her team focused. Lost at Oklahoma State on December 30th. They did not have Johnson or Prince. Beat him by 25 in the rematch, and that's a nifty little Johnson to Davis combination and now the lead is back to a comfortable 11 points but Oklahoma battling back Alexis Jones coming up with some big buckets and it looks like Baylor is on its way to its 15th straight win and Baylor's mantra this year they're wearing wristbands it says eight is not enough and there is a Photo of the, the wristband or a shot of the wristband. And that's because the last two years they have gotten as far as the Elite Eight and both times lost to Notre Dame. And she wants to instill that in her players. So they wear them during practice. They give out these wristbands in practice. They practice in them. Then after practice, it's almost like your mouthpiece. You give it back to the trainer. <laughs> well, you give this back to Jennifer. And then they keep up with this. So it's a constant reminder of what they're going for this year. 8-0 run for Baylor after Oklahoma got within shouting distance. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is Peyton Little's first field goal of the game. Oklahoma's second leading score. Just one of five from the floor. Five points, but most likely too little too late. And Alexis Jones has hurt this team not once but twice this year. 25 points the first time, and she has pretty much put a dagger in here in the fourth quarter. Well, she's a great offensive addition to Baylor because she can score on the bounce. This is a lefty. She can take you right or left. She's tough to defend, and especially how explosive she is off the bounce. Once she creates that space, then she gives herself room to go up and score. Man, that's a great addition for the Baylor Bears. 22 points for Jones. 
And again, this season, whenever they play a ranked team, she really gets going, averaging about eight points more per game against ranked teams and against unranked teams. And she was crucial because Oklahoma had the crowd on their side. Kim Mulkey said she knew it would be, and it is, it's a tough building to play in. But Jones came up big, and there you see the numbers, both Alexis and Nina Davis upping their scoring against ranked teams. You know what Alexis Jones brings back to Baylor? The characteristics of Odyssey Sims. Odyssey could break you down off the bounce. So she could shoot the three as well. And when you needed that go-to person to get a bucket, you could go to Sims. Well, now, Kim Mulkey, you want that go-to bucket, you can go to Alexis Jones. And what a luxury that is, and, it, and what a luxury it must be as a head coach to have a player who wants the ball in that situation. Oh, yeah. Give me the ball. It's part, it's part talent, but it's more attitude because you've got to have that confidence. Inside a minute to go now. Ortiz off balance. Oklahoma will close out its regular season. Iowa State comes here in five days, and then they finish up March 1st at Texas Tech. And the Big 12 tournament starts March 4th in Oklahoma City. Little just couldn't get that one to go down. And Brown is fouled. Oklahoma will fall to 9-7 and seven in the Big 12 which will put them in fifth position. Baylor number one, Baylor, Texas gonna finish things off. Baylor won in Austin earlier this year. And February 29th, Texas will come into Waco. And before that, they have to play, Baylor does at Kansas State. So the University of Connecticut on a big time roll, haven't lost for a while, to say the least, going for their fourth straight championship. Is Baylor a team? that could potentially knock off UConn this year. Yes, but I, I think that they, because they've got a great point guard in Nia Johnson, you've got to score Alexis Jones, and if these freshman post players continue to progress, they'll be great, and you've got Alexis Prince, who is a great three-point shooter for Baylor as well. This Baylor team has depth. They have, as Carolyn said, those post players, so Nina, I Davis. left out Nina Davis. Yeah, and Nina Davis. And I just so love her and that great energy that she brings. And she's that glue player, too, with the effort that she demonstrates for a team. Annie Manning at the line. And this is Julie Bennett, who is the sports information director, has been for 23 years at Baylor, one of the best in the business, is going to retire after this season. And uh, we will certainly miss her. The game will miss her. She's done a great job. But she said she, she'll still be in the area. Oh, so yeah. she said, I expect when you come to Waco, you better look me up. <laughs> Julie Bennett, thanks to her for all of her incredibly hard work. As she has, you know, 23 years at Baylor, so she has been there for the lean years and then the last 16 years with Kim Mulkey when they have not been the mountaintop a couple of, couple of times. I wonder if she had that silver top <laughs> before Kim before came. Kim came. <laughs> it was kind of like the presidency. Yeah. The, the president goes gray. I wonder if that's what Kim Mulkey did to Julie Bennett. <laughs> they have a great working relationship, and you know Kim really appreciates her. But the sports information director is the hardest working people that you're ever going to find. Maddie Manning goes to the bench. A great effort for Manning. A new career high in rebounds for her with nine. Or make it ten, excuse me. And a lot of battle, but just not enough against this very talented Baylor ball club. I don't like that defensive back tip by Alexis Jones. And she got beat by Gabby Ortiz and in that time called for the foul. Peyton Little at the line. A subpar game for her. And as you mentioned earlier, Coach Cole says that she carries her mistakes with her, tries too hard sometimes, ultra competitive, but got to be able to shake it off, right? you got to move on to the next play. You know, you can't you miss a shot. And she, Terry Cole said she's talked to her about focus on other things that you can help this team win, whether it be rebounding, getting a steal, you know, playing tough defense. Don't get so hung up on the last shot that you missed. Peyton was the Big 12 newcomer of the year last year after coming over from Texas A&M, first team performer. And tonight, just one of six from the floor. 
And that's the mantra, too. I've, you've heard Gino Oriema talk about it. It's the things you do when the basketball isn't in your hands that are just as important. Well, yeah, you look at what Brianna Stewart's done and how well she plays without the basketball. Anna Davis gets one to dribble in. Thirty-two point four seconds left to go. Nina Davis was the Big Twelve Player of the Year last year. Consensus All-American. Won a gold with the World University team in South Korea this past summer, and talked about how that experience has certainly helped her, and she's brought that to. And this is the scary thing. She's going to be back next year. I know. When this season started, I was thinking that she, this was her senior year because we've talked about her so much from her freshman year till now. I'm so glad that we had another year with Nina Davis. No one else in the Big 12 is. But <laughs> <laughs> She's a great player. Prince gets an emphatic block. This is the senior year for Nia Johnson, who has been a terrific point guard for them. We'll see. We'll be watching her this summer. She'll be on someone's WNBA roster. And if they do play UConn, let's say in the Final Four, Johnson and Maya Jefferson, two of the very best in the point position. I one of four Lady Bears who already have their degrees. No one in the history of the Big 12 has more assists. How about a, a game earlier this year against McNeese State? Nia Johnson, 19 assists, one turnover. She should buy a hamburger for every player on her team that made the shot so that it was counted as an assist. Reigning Big 12 player of the week, Kim Mulkey with some words for Kalani Brown. Talented freshman post player at 6'7". For the Lee. Gets the free throw to go. 21.4 seconds left to go, and you see that was a good shot. Mom Pr Premier and Kalani Brown, the two freshman posts. They have done such a great job for Baylor, who will go to 28-1 on the season, 15-1 in the Big 12, now 9-0 against ranked opponents. Well, I still have K-State and then the rematch, the showdown with Texas. The Big 12 is going to be one of those conferences you're going to want to keep an eye on. They're in the driver's seat to win the sixth straight regular season championship. But a great effort, too. You have to give Oklahoma a lot of credit. They could have laid down here down 19 in the third quarter, cut it to two, a two-point advantage. Yeah, they made a run at it in this fourth quarter. But when you have a point guard like Nia Johnson and you've got a go-to guard, scoring guard like Alexis Jones, that's just too much. And Baylor has that firepower. Alexis Jones leading everybody with 22 points. Nia Johnson just six assists tonight. Disappointing. <laughs> it was a night off. Yeah. Well, slacker. But Alexis Jones was electrifying. Baylor wins it 78 to 70. For Carolyn Peck and our entire crew, I'm Pam Ward as we say so long from Norman. Time for college basketball live with Adnan Burke. See you later.